nice to finally get to meet you. I've you too. I've been a big fan of your, of your vocal style for many, many years. Thank you. You, of course, worked with Devin Townsend and, of course, Arin Lucasen. I was sent this from Roy many, many years ah, ago. Nice. Very um, good. So, yeah, I'd like to thank Roy even for making this interview possible. And I'd like to thank you for your time. Sure thing. Yeah, no, I'm happy that, that you want to talk to me about, you know, everything and... Uh, that's great. You know, it's it's all you want when you release an album just to talk and share, and uh, it's fantastic. So you've been you've been singing since you were seven, I understand. You were <laughs> right about that. Yeah, ever since I can remember. Yeah. And then in, you you've been all over the map in terms of like backing people up vocally. And then you had your own um, progressive rock band. But now you've got this, this album that's a very personal album, but it kind of goes back to your roots because you're, you're predominantly trained in classical and, and jazz. So this has a lot of that. Yeah, I, I suppose uh, everything that you kind of take in, in throughout your life, you know, your education and Thing you go through and everything will eventually come out through the, uh, your music um, and in my case that's uh, uh, it, there's a lot of different things coming out of my pen I'll, you know and my my last album was an album with uh, Vuur with my metal band so that was like progressive metal and this is a, um, a solo acoustic even a folky rootsy kind of mm -hmm. album and um, I guess I was surprised too when when I you know started writing these songs for this album. I was thinking I wasn't thinking. I was just I just thought I'm gonna write and don't think about anything or what people might expect or want or or even me just write you know close your eyes start playing start singing and this is what came out and it was um, a surprise to me too. But it, I think you know eventually everything you kind of take in comes out. And this is what comes out, you know, now. Because it was very personal for you, too. You were going through a hard part of your life. And, and so this is very personal. Is that, was that harder for you to sing because it's coming from that personal space? Is it harder for you um, to put out there? Or was it more cathartic for you? It is. It is cathartic. You know, when when I made the decision to go and write about this, uh, uh, that that period in in my life, you know, um, it was easy. It was actually more difficult to to make the decision to go and write uh, a solo acoustic album because I was planning on writing a metal album for my band Vuur. So I started writing like with a metal frame of mind like okay and everything that came out was uh, soft and acoustic and and emotional and and i i i had to pull the brakes and because there was so much stuff going on in my life you know my relationship wasn't going well so there's a lot of of hiccups there and and with fear with the band it wasn't going well and um, so to make that decision, like, okay, I have to pull the brakes, um, regroup, uh, and clear my head, you know, focus and, and write this kind of album, because this is what comes out. That was harder than actually writing the songs. Cause that's easy. You just, you know, I never have problems writing really. I never have writer's block or anything like that. Well, and I, I, I like the fact that you were able to not worry about what you thought or what the fans would think. Predominantly, you were just writing from your heart and and just letting it go. And yeah, and that's the whole, that's the beauty of creating things is, is just being able to write from the heart. 
Yeah, because you know, I think there's no other way. I mean, we can, or you know, we can just come up with an idea and write a song. Of course, it's going to be good music, but for me, I can't do that. If I, I have to write from the heart. If it's not honest, people will notice, you know. And and fans, they're not stupid. They will feel if it's real or not. And in, in my case, I have to be, you know, completely honest about music. And it can be, you know, this is a an album about hardship, but I can write about, you know, positive stuff or the sun shining or whatever. But as long as it's, as long as I feel it, then the audience will feel it too. But even the, the album title, you know, is is a positive outlook. Even the, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. We have to. I mean, there's stuff going on in everybody's life so i'm not the only one of course having you know challenges when we decide to go to meet them face head on and to work through them then on the other side there's always light uh, i'm sure of this you know so but we have to go through a little bit of darkness in our lives to get to that place or the light or inner peace or happiness you know whatever you want to call it Yes, most definitely, and I think it. I think it comes across on the album. I think it's mm -hmm. it's a beautiful. I like the song. Um, my favorite song is "I Saw a Car." That's a really <laughs> really fun song, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> was that it's so just, funny. Was, you that say was that. Just a fun song for you to write. Totes. Yeah, it is totally. Yeah, that's the. the it's. Uh, there's a few songs that doesn't necessarily that don't necessarily deal with the topic of the album, and I saw a car was actually it made me happy when I wrote it, but I wrote it like really uh, wide and in, uh, far into the uh, the recording process, uh, and I wrote it in the evening while being in the studio, and I didn't even know it was a good song because I thought. Okay, so I wrote this song and it's a bit strange, but I really like it. So I let my producer hear it and he said, well, it makes me happy too. So let's work on it. And we did a lot of like body percussion and, you know, and had a lot of fun with it. And a lot of people like it maybe because it's just, you know, fun song. I guess it's a lighter song of the, of the album, you know. And, yeah. And it sounds like you had fun singing it. Yeah, de defo, yeah. <laughs> Well, and getting down to the bare basics, like even even the video, like My Promise, is a very bare minimum video. Like it's not in your face. No. It's very subtle and, but it, it shows the dynamics of relationships through the process of the video, right? Yeah, yeah. That was the intention of the video is that, although the lyrics are, a little bit dark you know they deal with hardship but there's hope in the in the chorus there's hope i will fight for you you know i fight for what i believe in um so the video should have that as well you know like a bit of sadness but the surroundings of the video this amazing restaurant where we shot it, it was like huge lights you know like a lot of daylight and so there's always they ha you have to have a balance even within a song within a video or within an album a balance between uh, the darkness and the light, you know? Uh, so I, we try to portray this in the video as well. Yeah, it comes across nicely. Great. But I gotta ask you, like, is there is there days when you get up and you just, because you sing with such energy and um, and such warmth in your in your tone, your expression of how you sing. Is there days where you just get up and you're just like, I'm just not feeling it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess. Uh, did, it happen, so, did it happen anytime during the album where it was just getting yeah. downtrodden for you and it was getting a bit too heavy to do? Yeah. Especially when I, you know, I wrote all the songs throughout like maybe a year or so. But when I was like seriously writing, um, for this album, like the first 10 to 12 songs, I, I couldn't, I didn't have the nerve to show them to anybody, to my husband, to Gijs, our producer, because um, 
I was thinking, well, this is truly honest music and it's what I feel and this is what it is. But is it any good? That's a, that's a whole different story. You know, you don't know if this is uh, good enough quality or to work on, to finish, to record. And because they're so personal and the songs are, uh, uh, some songs are about Rob, you know, my husband. And yeah, if I, then he reads the lyrics and, and then I think if it's not good, I will fall so hard, you know. And then sometimes it would make me, would make me very, um, uh, how do you say, insecure about. And then, but there is a moment where you have to get up and say, well, fuck it. These are the songs. This is what comes out. Let's make uh, the most of them with the guys, you know, his guitar playing, his production ideas. And yeah, then, you know, then when, when I get, got to that point, uh, I was really happy with the song. Yeah, I, I applaud your um, tenacity to stick with it and just, and just go ahead. And, you know, it comes out on the 26th and it's, it's quite a, it's quite a different album than what people might expect from you but i i personally love it i think it's a great album i was just playing it prior to the interview <laughs> thank you <laughs> well that that that's uh that means a lot that means a lot because everything goes in waves and whenever you release an album sometimes it really catches on sometimes it doesn't you know and so the real that's that's the uh, that's what's realistic mm -hmm. uh, about all of that. But when you write um, such an inward, you know, personal album, it's a little bit more scary than uh, than normal when you release it. Yeah. So I'm really happy with uh, the fact that you like it so much. Well, and some people make an entire career out of singing breakup songs. Like look at Taylor Swift; she's made a career out of it, right? <laughs> Totes, yeah, she's doing great though. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, and sometimes you know, it's people say it's easier to write a breakup song, and of course, it's it's fairly easy to write a love song. It is. It's it's way harder to talk about something else. But um, on the other hand, it can also become become cheesy or mushy very quickly, and I try to avoid that. A little bit. It should be romantic, but it should be real at the same time, you know. Yeah, but you can you can feel that emotion coming through when you're singing those songs because you can feel mission it. accomplished. Yeah, you can feel the pain in the lyrics and the way in which you're singing them, like that. That in itself says a lot. Yeah, I think. Well, that's that's great <laughs> so how are things at your end um now that you have the album coming out are you are you planning any maybe like in-house performance like maybe like a, 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 a stream of some sort yeah we're working on that yeah it's um uh as we can't perform live yet I'm working on something really nice to put online to for a streaming event uh, after the uh, release of the album. So that would be that that that's going to be really nice. We're, we've been working on this for weeks and months even. So um, so that's uh, that's going to happen. And then um, I'm I am actually rehearsing and singing, playing guitar, rehearsing for a set. Um, because when we have the green light and we can go out again, I'll be ready to perform live immediately. So I'm working on that. So it's all behind the scenes stuff, but I'm pretty, pretty busy also with the interviews and, you know, promoting the album. So it's pretty, pretty busy already. Good schedule of long days and making videos, doing the set list. And um, so I guess I will we'll be doing that. And I think the live stream things will remain uh, to be a thing to do, even though we 
you know, one day we can go out again and physically play again or tour or travel. I think uh, we can still use, you know, this um, infrastructure for for later stage, you know, for maybe when we do a, a gig in Santiago de Chile and we can broadcast it online. And I think uh, it's only a good thing that we have this now. Yeah, I, I agree. It, because you're able to touch base with people on a different level now. Yeah, yeah. And then, of course, we've had internet for a long time, but now the infrastructure seems to be, and it's not even that fast because we it took us a year to really kind of make these internet live streams uh, kind of fluid and, and okay. Because up until now, everybody had, you know, huge problems with lags and whatever, whatever. So, so, uh, but now that it's here, we, I think we can still use it next year or whatever. Yes. Cause I'm up in Canada. In the future. I'm up in Canada and you're in Holland. Exactly. So it's yeah. like we're talking next door to each other. Right? Dude. Yeah. And, and that's great. So it's, it's, that's a good thing about, you know, the this new age of technology and so on there's really no borders when it comes to the internet <laughs> no not at all no <laughs> well is there anything you'd like to add at all or? well not really i'm i'm just super excited about the album and i'm really looking forward to physically go play live again and coming to Canada and the, and the United States because I, I, I did this tour with um, you know uh, it's, it's already 2019 man, time flies but I loved it so much I love touring the US and Canada and, and traveling and playing live, that's the best thing for me, I love being in the studio I love the recording the album and writing and but performing is m my number one thing in life so I hope we can do that soon again and come your way again. I would love, I would love that. I'm sure anybody else in North America would love that as well, because you're you're quite uh, well highly thought of. So, I thank you. <laughs> That's that makes me happy. <laughs> well, I sincerely appreciate your time. I believe my time is up. So, you too, Anthony. Thanks for taking the time. All the best to you and great success with the album. I wish you all the best with the album and hopefully we'll see Thank you, you so in much. the future. All right. Okay. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.